What is going on guys, DBG here, and today we're going to be talking about Bracket Buster players and another awful set in my team, lads. And to be honest, like, this is not Phenom. Is it Phenoms? What was the set called again? The really bad one. What was the really bad one with Dirk called again? I remember Phenoms was last year. Whatever the awful set with Dirk was is the worst set we have ever had in my team. This is a close second. This is a very close second, so. Maestro. It's a close second to Maestro. You've got 100 overall Magic Johnson, who no one's ever going to get. You've got Dark Matter, Camelo Anthony, and Dark Matter, Adam Morrison. We're both going to be great cards, don't get me wrong, but like. Who really cares? Then my favorite, one of my favorite players of all time. Tyler Hansbro. I can't get him. Do we not remember last year? Do we not remember last year, like. Tyler Hansbro right here. They gave the Duke Kuzma base on quick with Jordan Dribble style. It was about 35k. If we remember 2k22 when we actually had a good bracket buster set. Sorry, the wrong thing. 2000 MT. And the set is this this card art is disgusting, by the way. It's first of all, it's caught it's copied and pasted. From two years ago. And it was terrible card art two years ago. Like at least just put a bracket there. This looks awful. Like it looked awful two years ago. If you go back in any of my videos from two years ago. I'll say it looks awful now. But who gives a damn? Who gives a damn? So the other Opals are Danny Ferry. Oh a 2k legend we can't use anymore. Shane Battier. Brilliant cheap budget card earlier in the year. Can't use him. Brandon Miller who gives a damn. And our pink diamonds are Kirk Heinrich. Kirk Heinrich. We don't know what Kirk Heinrich comes with. Because he's not in the game. Let's see what Kirk Heinrich had on, as default. Jad Dribble style. Uh, this is actually a pretty good release by default. And he's on the all-time bulls, I guess. Um, Kirk Heinrich might be that bad. Because he is a 6-4 point guard who's going to have god tier defense. He might be like your Jason Kidd type player. We have Joachim Noah. We have Noah. So this year, Noah has had a card in Season 1. Default small Robert Covington. That's actually not a bad release. Uh, it's Vlade. It's not that bad. Which is a shock. It's not actually that bad a release. Can't dribble. Still a 6'11 center power forward. It's going to cost 100k. When we had Dino last week. Steve Blake? Steve Blake. They gave us Steve Blake. When was the last... Oh, we saw Steve Blake in the Bracket Buster set where he had a good release. Steve Blake had John Stockton, Kobe, and Quick. You know what? If he has John Stockton, Kobe, and Quick with Jordan Dribble style, he's still going to be a bum, but he might be less of a bum than expected. I'm sorry, a 6-2 point guard with these who can't dunk. Like, what's he meant to do? What's Steve Blake meant to do for us? I'm going to be honest. What is Steve Blake meant to do for us? LaFrance. Now, LaFrance might be him. Like, I just want to put it out there. Rafe LaFrance might be that guy. This dude here was lights out. That's a good release. Basic dribble style kind of sucks. It does kind of suck. But that's a good release. He's going to be 6'11". If his speed is like 85, if his um, lateral, again, lateral doesn't really matter. I think Ty even said a lateral pitch doesn't really matter. But if his speed is like 85 to 90, you're looking at a guy who might be better than David Robinson. That being said, I think David Robinson has hit his like low. I don't think he, he's 2K. I don't think allow him, will allow him to go below this price. 2K have like set floors in every card. That's why Kyle, Cor that's why season one rubies go for 15K. But, um, you're still probably, is he, he might not be better than David Robinson. Like, it's actually annoying how good this card is in hindsight. Like, just how much better he is than everybody. Like, he has potential to be pretty decent. He has potential to be pretty decent. George is Niang. We're getting five cards that aren't gambling cards. And one of them is George is Niang. The guy who everybody keeps thinking they can beat in a 1v1. They obviously can't. 
on a positive, he gets his own release on quick. On a positive, man gets his own release on quick. And at least, at least we get, if you're wondering where your, our Leitner is, our Leitner's here. Easter event's pretty good, and I'll talk about that in another video. But at least you got a free Leitner. You gotta have friends to get your free Leitner, though. You do have to get have to have friends, but you can get through 50 games of TT offline very, very, or co op very quickly. Um, yeah, that's um, that is one not awful thing, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's a terrible set, like. Ain't else you getting co-op? You get a shattered piece for pink diamond e books, who gives a damn? It's a piece for a pink diamond center. Um All-Star 10 base pack box. Ooh. You're not getting eight on that, and I'm get it's probably unauctionable as well. Um either way, sets not it's, it's not really worth doing. The only thing is, is that if these guys are all like 80k each, and this set's really is really cheap. But the problem is, is that if we look at the sets, they're all going to still be expensive. These 2k have set a price of 200. Back in the day, if a set was like 450,000 VC to buy every individual player, it would cost 200,000 VC. Because if you go to player market, so you can see right here, five percent discount. Let's scroll back. There's a six, 50%, 50%, 64% discount, 12% discount. Like, in season four and before, below, a 50% discount was just normal. Like, that was just normal. 35, 37, 30, so it was dropping. 58, 58, 58. 42, 42, 58, 58, 54, 58. So that's what the discounts used to be. It's gone from a 50% discount for locking in to 5%. If this was a 50% discount and this set right here was, let's just say, it was 125,000 VC. So you could buy, you could basically lock in four of these over the course of a season for $100. So 25 each. It would be a bit expensive. But still, like, definitely a bit expensive, but, like, $25 is a lot more reasonable than $60. They're more than $50, and that's the way the price has gone. That is the way it's gone. It's just, like, it's crazy. And you might be saying, oh, but you only have to lock in five of these. See, last week, um, with some of these cards, because there were six of them, with some of these guys being 70k, some of them were expensive and others were like 70k. All of these guys are likely to be over 100k. And yeah, you're probably going to get somebody good for locking in here. Like, I don't think these cards are bad, if we're being honest. Um, Shane Battier might be great, but like, it's just not worth it. It's not going to be worth it when we see, when it flashes up in the uh, in the blog next week, all oh, Season 5 Galaxy Opals are going to be in the player market. That's going to happen. So I wouldn't lock in. I'd hoard MT, if we're being honest. Oh, another day, another awful set. 